Welcome to the first video in our tutorial series. We at Longnecker Photography don't see any reason to keep secrets, so we're inviting you to watch how we handle post-production. I love using Lightroom, which is the software you see before you. I think it's really robust, and it is universal for all kinds of different camera formats. And actually, I should mention that uh, before we get started, that we're going to be using images from different photographers around the world. Uh, I want to really get a handle on what other camera systems are capable of. So we will be using Canon cameras, Nikon, Sony, it could be a full frame camera or a medium format camera. We might even jump into smartphone cameras. I don't really know where we're going to head in this series, but uh, I do want to see how other cameras uh, perform so that when it comes time for us to decide to upgrade our hardware, we have a better understanding of what's out there. So this picture was taken by a man named Jim Harmer, and uh, it's a lovely photograph. Uh, the composition is great. The lighting is really solid. Uh, but before we get going, I want to remove this tree branch. Well, actually, maybe it is a tree. These kind of things are exceedingly distracting. So we're going to use the crop tool, making sure that the uh, little lock is unlocked. That will allow us to just affect one edge. And that is all we need to do, just enough to get rid of the tree, but not enough to trim off her elbow. You'll find in image editing that it's a big no-no to trim off any body parts. So. That already makes it look much better. Uh, the image is too dark, it is underexposed. So I'm gonna use the scroll wheel on my mouse to just raise that up a little bit. Uh, she also looks a little bit too pale. So we will add a little bit more warmth to the image. And it looks like the vegetation is casting a kind of a yellowish greenish tone on her skin. So we will boost that up as well to make her look a little bit more pink and rosy. Uh, with that, I think that's pretty much a really good starting ground. Uh, let's use the tone curve, and you have to be careful with this. Small adjustments will make big differences in contrast. We are just going to change the top and the bottom. And this is going to make uh, the image pop just uh, quite a bit. And with that, I think we're already looking really good. I think maybe the vegetation is too bright. It's pulling your eye away from looking at her. So we will put on really subtle vignette and we'll raise the feather uh, which will pull the darkness towards the edges and make the transition more smooth. So in terms of big 10,000 foot uh, kind of adjustments I think we are done but we do want to go in here with the brushes and uh, improve some small details. Uh, let's go in here with the skin softening brush and change it. You never want to go full clarity. Uh, you'll make her look like a wax figurine. And we're just going to kind of paint over her skin. I'm going to press the, uh, the O key on my keyboard. We are going to paint over her skin and just get rid of some of that unevenness. Um, this is something that uh, definitely improves the overall look of, of skin. It's something that you can paint everywhere and then remove later, which I will show you. Uh, so we're just going to be very liberal with its application. Uh, for this tutorial. If I was doing this for a paying client, I might be a little bit more careful around the hair and clothing. But for this, I just want to show you the basics. Uh, if you hold the Alt key on a PC, it will bring up the minus uh, brush. And then you just go in and remove it from parts that you do not want it to exist. So we are going to remove it from her eyes, maybe her mouth. Uh, hit the O key and then hit done. Uh, so now her skin is looking much more smooth, but I want to focus on her eyes and make them pop. She has really gorgeous eyes, and we will go with the iris enhancer, and then again, adjust these settings. Uh, I don't know what the guys at Adobe were thinking when they made these presets, but they just don't work for anybody. So we will come in here, and we will just do a quick pass over her eyes and eyebrows. Uh, this is the area that we look at when we look at humans. Uh, we focus on the eyes first, at least. So we want to really bring those out and make her look as good as we can. Her hair is also looking a little flat, so we are gonna make a new brush, which will copy over those old settings. And we will maybe, let's let's raise the tint. It looks like the, uh, the vegetation is causing, you know, the front half of her hair to look very kind of green and unhealthy. So we're just gonna paint over the whole thing. We can just do a quick pass. It's just going to add more texture and clarity um, and deal with that color tone that we don't really want. Figure if she's playing with it, she must like her hair, so we are going to emphasize it. and Maybe remove it right there where it's on her part. 
that already looks much better. So uh, I think in terms of brushes, we're probably done, but there are some small imperfections in our skin that we want to address. So the spot removal tool, we will start here in the corner. It looks like she laid in some dirt as she was getting into position. And this tool is not as robust as what you'd find in Photoshop. Uh, one of the beauties of Lightroom is that it edits images non-destructively, which might sound very strange, but it means that it's not actually manipulating the pixels. It is basically concocting a recipe that gets applied to the original image, uh, but not actually permanently. So when you load it up next time in Lightroom, these adjustments will be there, um, but they're not permanent. So if you didn't like one of the adjustments, you felt that the brush was too extreme or the spot removal really, you know, it, you accidentally deleted a, uh, a birthmark or some element that the client was upset about, you can always go back in later and adjust it with no loss of quality. Uh, it's one of the best things about Lightroom. Um, yeah, I, I'm not gonna be surprised if a bunch of you end up buying Lightroom by the end of this series. I am a huge fan of it and I think you will be too. So she did a great job on her makeup. We just wanna help her out. Uh, these small imperfections, you don't wanna go too crazy. I mean, there is, a line that you don't want to cross where she just does look um, like, you know, like, even, like a good, like a wax model or a Barbie or a who knows what mannequin. We just want to focus on the most distracting elements and leave the rest alone. You want to keep a, a certain level of authenticity to the picture. So with that, I think I'll hit done and we will call that a finished image. So. Uh, that was maybe just, what, five minutes of work, and she's looking much better. If I hit the backspace key, you can see how this started, and then if I hit it again, you can see where we ended up. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and stay tuned for future episodes. I think I'll try to do them once a week, uh, and I welcome your critiques or comments, so please reply below or uh, contact us on our Facebook page.